Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome to another three-way comparison. Today it is three sub $1,000, sub 40 millimeter automatic GMTs. Three watches that each take a distinctly different approach to the same problem, that being telling the time in two different places simultaneously. One watch is by Yema, one watch is by Mayen, and one watch is by Steinhardt. Now the Mayen is Mayen, but the Steinhardt and the Yema are both kindly on loan from Mr. P. He has well over 400 watches by now and he has loaned a bunch of them to me to make videos just like this. So thank you again, my friend. Interesting comparison this one. As I said, the three are quite different. The only thing they have in common is their size and those automatic GMT movements. And spoiler alert, the best watch doesn't win. Seriously, let's flip the camera and find out why. All right, so GMT Fight Club, let's talk about it even though we're not supposed to. So the scoring here, 10 categories, maximum of 10 points, although the top two are double weighted. That gives a theoretical maximum score of 120, but the Scottish judge is notoriously tight. Actually, there's a 10 here today. You don't see that often. I'm then gonna convert it into a percentage so you get an easy comparison between the three watches. Let's have a look at these three contenders then. The first being the Yema Navigraph Marine National. 39 millimeters in diameter, 13 mil thick with a 47 lug to lug, 20 mil lug width. Sized up for Mr. P because it's his watch and not mine, 133 grams, certainly 140 or so if I stick in an extra link for me. Unique to the group because it has a sapphire bezel insert and the bezel is a bi-directional friction bezel today so you can set the GMT hand and then adjust it to measure other time zones if you're crossing borders or you just want to know the time somewhere else in the world. Now, because this is a Marine National tie-in, you would expect it to come with a Marine National paratrooper style band, and indeed it does. That's an extra. I don't have it. I'm going to concentrate on the bracelet. Talking of bracelets, contender number two is the main Greenwich 38. 38 millimeters in diameter, 12.6 mil thick, 46 lug to lug, 20 mil lug width and 130 grams, now roughly 130 grams. The bracelet you see there is a glide lock style oyster. That's not the bracelet that this watch is available with from Mayen. This is the bracelet that is available from Mayen. That's the one I'm gonna imagine and with your permission, you're also gonna imagine is on the watch today. I'll tell you exactly how good I think the bracelet is in just a minute or two. Contender number three, is the Steinhardt Ocean 39 Vintage GMT, aka the Steve McQueen. I'll talk about the rather spurious Steve McQueen connection a bit later on. Now this is a homage. The other two are original designs. This is not. This is a Rolex Explorer from the 1970s. However, they haven't been making this design for literally decades now. And if you want an original, you're paying 20 odd grand. How am I gonna factor in the fact that this one is a homage today? I'm not. I'm going to carry on regardless. I'll maybe talk about it a little bit in brand, but I'm leaving that choice entirely up to you. So then those are our three contenders today. These are our 10 categories. Let's get on with it, starting with one of my favorites. It's price double weighted. Now the Yema is the most expensive watch here, so it scores the lowest. It gets a six double to 12. The main sits somewhere in between an eight double to 16. The Steinhardt kicks things off with a perfect 10 doubled to 20. Now the Yema from the Yema website costs $1,050, but there was always 10% off. That takes it somewhere in the high 900s. They are sold out from there. However, they are still available from Nomon watches out of Singapore for $944, including delivery. As I said, the most expensive watch on the table today, but it does come with that extra band, don't forget. Now the main is available direct from main for $630, just ahead of the watch. You then have to add in a bracelet you Yourself. The bracelets from the Skymaster fit the Hudson and the Greenwich. The bracelets are available for 70 euros. That adds up to 700 euros, which is roughly $785. Somewhere in the middle, eight out of 10, double to 16. The Steinhardt though is significantly cheaper than both, coming in at 630 odd dollars. For a Swiss made automatic GMT, that is a fantastic price. Hence the 10, double to 20. Moving on then to the second category, that being movement. All three are automatic GMTs. All three feature different movements, however. The Yema for its in-house caliber 3000 scores a seven. The Mayen for its Swiss Tech S24 also scores a seven. The Steinhardt pushing further in front scores a nine 
doubled to 18. So the Yema Calibre 3000 is in inverted commas in-house, but it's no more French than the other two are Swiss today. We all know that most of these components are manufactured in China. Final assembly may well take place in France, but that doesn't mean to say it can wear a berry and a string of onions. Anecdotally, the one I've got in front of me is running very well at plus two seconds per day variance, but because it's a relatively unknown quantity, it's only scoring a seven. Similarly, the Swiss Tech S24045 in the back of the main is a little bit of an unknown quantity, so it only gets a seven. It is yet another clone of the ETA 2893-2, but because it's not the original, it loses points for that. Now on the Steinhardt website, they advertise this one as either having an ETA 2893 or a Salita SW330, which is yet another clone of the 2893. Now, if it had an ETA 2893, this would be getting a 10. I'm operating on the basis that it doesn't. It has a Salita, which is the next best thing, hence the nine. So the cheapest watch here has the best movement of the bunch. Next up is fit and finish. And in this category, I'm specifically looking at the case, the case finishing, the materials used, the general standards, and how it all screws together. And to my eyes and my fingers anyway, Way, the Yema is a little bit better than the other two. Main, probably the least best finish of the three, if you see what I mean. Steiny, somewhere in between. I think the Yema is a very nicely made watch overall, this one. Marine National logo on the crown, Marine National logo on the embossed case back. All very well finished, kind of brushed throughout, sharp transitions. No weak spots here, nice fit for the end links and drilled lugs too, meaning you can swap over onto the Marine National with relative ease. Now the main takes a slightly different approach from the other two in that it doesn't have a bezel with numerals. All the numerals for the GMT are on the dial. It does have this kind of stepped bezel instead though with a high polished upper surface and a brushed lower surface. It's a nice effect outside. Chamfered edges to the case, drilled lugs, main branded crown there, but there is a little bit of machining marking on the opposite side of this specific case and the semi-sterile case back, not exactly inspirational, so it gets a six out of 10. Steinhardt comes in somewhere in between the other two, very well machined on that fixed bezel there. The polishing perhaps not up to the standard of the mains though, on the side of the case, it does have a Steinhardt branded crown and a Steinhardt branded, this is kind of range typical case back. Again, better than the mains, not quite as nice as the Yema, hence the score is better than the mains, not quite as high as the Yemas, it gets Seven. Moving on to bracelet, now you're gonna to have to cut me a little bit of slack here. Use your imagination and allow me to slip in a bit of previously edited video footage when discussing the bracelet on the main. I didn't keep the original bracelet. There's a reason for that. I don't think it's particularly good. I do really like the Yema one. The Steinhardt one, again, not bad in between the others. Overall, this Navy Graph bracelet is a great choice. H-Link, again, brushed to match every surface on the watch. Female end links with a little bit of articulation there help it wear comfortably, but actually bulk it up a touch. It does come out of the watch rather flat. The clasp is all right, pin and collar system by the way. The clasp is okay. There's some micro adjust, perhaps I would have liked to have seen a little more micro adjust because they are quite long links and there's no push button system here, but it has nice etching to the milled lower surface and one of the best divers extensions I've seen on any watch at any price really very nice indeed, eight out of 10. Now there are positives and negatives to the main bracelet. I think it looks very nice. It really suits that retro aesthetic of the watch overall. Adds a little bit of visual interest with those high polished outer inner links, if you see what I mean. Unfortunately, it's only got two holes of micro adjust, so you're gonna struggle to get as good a fit as you are with the other two bracelets. And it may be screw links, but I had difficulties removing the screws. I cheesed one of them, as you can see there on the right, so it only gets a five. Seven out of 10 for the Steiny, really not much to complain about here. They provide half links, which is great. The end link is articulated, it's all brushed. It is a bit thicker than I would have liked though, and the clasp, now, milled upper, milled lower here. No pushers though, not quite as fancy as the Yema one, no diver's extension, so in between seven out of 10. Well, well, at this stage, things aren't looking good for the main, are they? It's beginning to fall behind. Can it claw back some ground when I discuss the crystal? What do you know? It can. The second perfect 10 on today's score sheet and it goes to the mains crystal. A decent piece of crystal can make or break a watch. The glass on the main is one of the best I've seen. Yema, not so much. Steiny, once more, somewhere in between.
The EMS Crystal Sapphire, obviously to match that Sapphire bezel insert, has two problems. The first is it's flat. The second is there's not enough anti-reflective undercoating. A lot of bounce back from this crystal, six out of 10. The Mayans, on the other hand, is fantastic. I reckon one of the top five bits of glass that I have encountered. Casio Oceanus and my Omega Aquaterra are also in that top five. So yeah, it's in good company. Clearly there's a chunk of anti-reflective undercoating, but it really shows off that lovely enamel dial. Good job, Mayan, top hat retro style as well. If only the rest of the watch was as good as the crystal. Anyway. 10 out of 10. Now the Steinhardt, I've given it an 8 so it does indeed fit in between the two other scores really because it integrates so nicely. Domed Sapphire, I wish however there was more AR coating. There is some but not enough. You do get plenty of flecto outside as you'll see later on. Still not bad though, 8 out of 10. Okay, dial and hands is next. I guess this is the most subjective category. This is my own hot take on what the dial and hands look like comparatively speaking on each of these three watches. And once again, the Yema is my personal favorite. Mayen and Steinhardt tied close behind. Interestingly, all three of the watches feature printed dials. The Yema has a lot going on, but I think it looks great. Heaps of text when you think about it, but they have aligned everything down the one vertical axis and it kind of crescendos in and out from the pinion. I think it looks fantastic. How good does that Marine National logo look down there? Beautifully incorporated where the index at six should be white on blue, great contrast from the hour hand, the minute hand and the second hand, plus those hands kind of float against the dial itself. Very slender GMT hand in red, it's not really intruding. Date complication at three with a little gold frame around it, picking up that navy graph text just above the pinion. As I said, a lot going on on a small dial, but it pulls it off beautifully. Once again, the main takes quite a different approach here. It has a high gloss enamel finish to the dial, which looks really luxurious, especially when combined with that gorgeous piece of facilitating sapphire crystal. Now there are big indices, big indices, and these indices, particularly the ones at 12, six and nine. The rest of them are pretty big as well. Printed train track around the outer edge, main logo, Greenwich 38 automatic and GMT. The only color on this dial being provided by the GMT script and the tip of that GMT hand. Once again, though the GMT hand is not particularly obtrusive, the hour hand and the minute hand mimic New York skyscrapers, allegedly. Date complication is fairly simply done there at the three o'clock. Again, there's quite a lot going on in not a huge amount of space, but I think it looks okay, seven out of 10. Now the Steinhardt is the most overtly vintage looking with that kind of forced patina on the dial, the kind of paint that makes it look older than it is. And of course, this is a Rolex design. So maybe the seven points should be going to Rolex and not to Steinhardt. The text on this dial I think is perhaps perhaps a little less well incorporated than it is on the other two, and it's a very plain matte black dial. Date complication at three at least has a beveled edge, but interestingly the 39 goes for a domed sapphire crystal with no cyclops, whereas the 42 actually gives you a cyclops on that one. Handset again, nicely legible, white against black, and you have that interesting stepped effect with the markers corresponding to the hours on the GMT hand, the odds being further out than the evens. It's nicely done, but perhaps doesn't quite have the pizzazz of the other two, seven out of 10. Moving on to Loom. Now, unfortunately, nobody excels in this particular category. Yema is the best of the bunch, me and the worst again, and the Steinhardt somewhere in between, seemingly as usual. So what have we got going on here? The Yema on the left has that sapphire bezel insert fully loomed. The Mayan in the middle has enormous indices. The Steinhardt on the right has that Fotina paint there's going to be a price for that as you'll see a bit later on. Initial glow from the main is fantastic as you would hope for, but when you crank the speed up, it actually does the worst of the three. The Steinhardt, because of that 14 er paint effect, the C3 old radium style, doesn't hang on quite as well as it should. The Yema's the winner, not outstanding, but definitely the most legible after the 20 minute test period. All right, bit of a quickie category next, water resistance. It's a nine for the Yema, a nine for the Steinhardt, and a six for the main. The Yema and the Steinhardt both have 300 meters of water resistance and a screw down crown. The main has a screw down crown, but only 100 meters of water resistance. And on to one other slightly subjective category, it's brand. All three of these are a little bit left field. You wouldn't describe any of them as mainstream, and it's been a little bit difficult therefore to differentiate between them. 
I give Yema a 7 here, though I have mixed feelings about that. Main a 4, and Steinhardt somewhere in between again, 6. So Yema, the only French brand here, have a rich heritage, but they are a bit of a zombie brand. They were resurrected a number of years ago after dying during the Quartz Crisis, like so many others. So they do have that little bit of je ne sais quoi because they're French. Navy Graph is a great model. It's another old design that they brought back over the last couple of years, but there remains a question mark over their customer service standards. Every time I reviewed a Yema, and I think I've looked at a couple, there's always a bunch of salty comments, people very unhappy not getting the service standard they require from Yema. So do bear that in mind if you are purchasing one for yourself. Mayen are one of the massive number of Swedish micro brands, but taking their inspiration from the Dutch influence on New York. Yeah, see if you can work that one out. I still can't. They've been in operation for five years. They've got a reasonably strong model range now. Three current automatics with a couple of quarts in their back catalogue, but they still don't have much of a profile, so I can only really give them a four. Steinhardt, owned and operated by Mr. Steinhardt now for 20 years. Real reputation for value for money, for reliability, and for borrowing other people's designs, including this one. As discussed, this is the Rolex Steve McQueen, even though nobody thinks that Steve McQueen actually owned one of these. There's just a rumor that he might have quite liked it. That's a spurious connection, if ever I heard one. So perhaps Steiny isn't going to get you much respect from the watch snobs, but I think budget watch collectors really do respect the brand and the build quality that they offer for not a lot of cash. All right, we're getting close to the end now and I've slotted in the last category, X Factor. I include X Factor sometimes as a way of helping me differentiate between watches. It's also a kind of convenient catch-all for anything that I think I've missed up until this point. And that allows me to award the Yema another couple of points over its rivals. This is a limited edition watch and it does have that Marine National tie-in, which is a great tie-in with another fabulous French brand. Plus you get that extra paracord strap and a nice little brochure, decent packaging, etc., etc. That I think claws back a couple of the points lost in price, 9 out of 10 for the Yema. Mayen, well, it's got that New York Dutch thing. Hands look like skyscrapers. That's pretty much it. 4 out of 10. And Steinhardt, well, at least you can have a conversation with somebody that the watch looks like a Rolex and Steve McQueen may or may not have liked it, but that's pretty much it there. 6 out of 10 for that one. All right then, time to reveal the totals. Drum roll, please. I think it is fairly obvious which watch is coming last today, but which watch is the winner? I did say in the intro that the best watch doesn't win. Well, Yema, 88 out of 120. Main is the laggard today with 77 out of 120. Steinhardt is the winner with 94 out of 120, giving percentage scores of 73, 64, and 78 respectively. I still like the main. I didn't put it in this roundup just to bash it. I just wish it were a little bit better. That crystal is stunning and I personally enjoy the dial design. It takes a lot of boxes for me personally in terms of specifications, but the bracelet could and should be better. The whole watch could and should be a little bit better. It's still a watch I enjoy, but it doesn't really make sense when you compare it to either of the other two in this particular comparison. And then there's the Yema, definitely the best watch of the three today. I think by a significant margin as well. However, it is 50% more expensive than the Steinhardt. And those kind of price differentials at less than $1,000 simply cannot be ignored. You can still buy these, no one still sells them. I think it's a great watch. The Sapphire Crystal really is the only element that lets this watch down, I think. If they had just put a slight dome on that and a bunch of air underneath, that I suspect would have been enough to take this one above the Steinhardt, even at the elevated prices. If you bought one of these, leave me a comment. Let me know whether or not you agree with my sentiments. Let me know whether or not you do think it is a bit of a bargain for less than a grand. But talking of bargains, if you're okay with the fact that this is a homage, it is not an original design, the Steinhardt really is such a solid, solid offering. The best movement of the bunch, the lowest price of the bunch, and no real shortcomings in any other area. For an extra 70 US dollars, you can get it on a Jubilee. I reckon that would take the bracelet experience up at least one more point, but the price probably down two more points. But considering that would still top out 
out at $700, I think that's definitely worth considering as well. The Steiny made it into my top five, bottom five roundup of 2021 because it is just such a value proposition. There are now no shortage of options. If you fancy an automatic GMT for less than a grand, this is definitely one of the strongest you can pick. So there you have it. Well done for making it all the way to the back end of a truly whopping comparison video. What was your pick there? The Yema, the Steiny, or perhaps you're the Contrarian and you would go with the main regardless of its poor score. If you want to see a bit more about the Yema Navy Graph, why not check out my full review? Or if you fancy the larger size 42 Steinhardt, I've got a full review of that you can watch as well. Thanks for watching this one. I'll see you again soon.